the whole truth. The island is indeed a place of legend. There is power and vast riches as well. But many who've sought to claim them have simply vanished without a trace. Your ship is stocked and your crew assembled. Charge your course and your fate. Welcome to Eternum, an ancient land of fantastical legends. The Law Seekers, three of the finest storytellers of the New World, await your arrival. They'll spin ye a tale of mystery and adventure, so grab an ale and rest ye self from your journey across the cursed seas. <laughs> So here's the deal. You're in the wilderness. You're out of ammo, whether you're rocking a bow or a musket, I don't care which, but you're rocking one. A bear is charging at you. On Eternum. Your go-to weapon is... Tripping you. <laughs> That's right. Because I, I ain't got to outrun the bear, I just got to outrun oh. you, so game's over. You thought all that so deep, and I crushed it right there, Trip. Bye. Didn't Next. see that one coming. Mike, Mike, you got one? Um, well, I've already tied Jibs with shoelaces because his Crocs <laughs> have shoelaces. So he's out. I do not. Liar. Don't know me. Sorry, bud. Your lunch. Well, here all day I thought, oh, yeah, this will be fun. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying to think with the monologue. Yeah, yeah. No, no, they're going to full on zombie apocalypse me. Okay. All right. Well, okay. you know why? Okay. Okay. You know why? Because we're getting good at. A tabletop RPG and and improving our next actions and you just opened the door we yeah. saw the open shot and we took it you saw an opportunity and I seized it yes you <laughs> did yes you did what's going on gentlemen not too much absolutely not too much at all you know what's funny Jibs is uh last week you talked specifically about my real life origin story living in Southern California, right? And and you made comment that, why is your state running out of water when you're right next to the ocean? <laughs> and yeah. I, I thought on that quite a bit because my response basically was that I, I am not in charge of making those big decisions and I, my, my decisions in life have nothing to do with water supply. And then I thought about it and I realized that's absolutely incorrect because my real life profession has absolutely everything to do with water yeah. supply. So I'm, I don't know, I guess I'm redacting what I said last week, but I still don't have any answers for you at why California is running out of freaking water. So there's that. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Who oh, no. knew? Who oh, no. <laughs> knew? <laughs> what up, champ? Not too much, man. How you been? Good. I've been doing well. Yeah? What Life's have you been playing good. this week? Uh, well, I have been doing the Wildlands thing. Mm, yeah, we have. First person shooter on, right? Mm -hmm. Haven't played much Payday. And uh, no. uh, Wildlands has been a thing, so just kind of ducking behind cars and shooting things. Man, there's something about like, like, I don't know. Well, actually, I know we all have. We've all been playing Wildlands. And um, I like kind of, I mean, since we can't be in New World yet, playing games that you know certain mechanics will come in handy. 
when you're in said game, when you're in New World. For instance, uh, aiming with your sniper rifle in Wildlands, like I'm going to be aiming a musket in New World, super handy. On top of that, Wildlands is completely open world, you know, sandbox. So I'm like, okay, all right. That feeling's going to come around again here on the 28th of uh, next month. So, you know. Maybe maybe even sooner than that. Oh, yeah. Speaking of, we got to talk about that later. Now. You know, what's funny is we, we did, uh, back in the day, we put, especially this trio that you're talking to right now, we actually put a lot of time into Wildlands. And I think the funny thing is, is that, um, like, I myself have not played a shooter in forever so it's just been kind of fun jumping back in there and and yeah, actually trying to trying to get my aim better because it, it is going to be a factor. And I think all three of all three of the old men on this podcast <laughs> had to relearn how to do like that quick reaction twitch type shooting. And it is actually kind of cool because you do have that little bit of feel like, well, I'm shooting a sniper rifle right now. And it's probably going to feel a little bit different than a musket or a bow, but at least, um, you know, hey, it's easy. You just don't lead them so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the 50 cal in Wildlands is going to shoot a tad different than a musket. Yeah, I'm going to go oh. boom every time oh, you fire you, that thing. You think the ballistics are a little different? Just a hair. Just a hair. <laughs> oh, guys. Well, uh, we're back. Are you guys ready? Always. The light is red. I am ready. It's red instead. Amen. All right. Well, <laughs> welcome back, everybody. This is episode two of Lore Seekers podcast for New World. We are your hosts. I am Jibs, and uh, we'll start with the one with hair. Uh, my good friend from northern Indiana, Champ. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the show. Good to be back. Number two. First one live stream. It's pretty exciting. Yeah, man. So, dos. Uh, I'm not gonna say I'm not ner nervous. I even just stuttered. Did you see that? I'm 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 actually jittery a little bit. A little bit right. It happens. It's gotta. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But this is a good time. Looking forward to it. We got a lot of good things to cover today, so I think it's gonna be a good time. Absolutely. And my good friend from SoCal, California, state running out of water. Boop boop. Cash. Yeah, that's me, and I still have nothing to do with that. But yeah, I'm very <laughs> excited. Um, there's been a lot of uh, lore deep dive this week. Uh, you'll see on Lore Lesson a little bit later how deep we dove, and it's it's very interesting. So yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing some reactions to the depth of how deep we dove. So there's that. Yeah, that yeah, was fun. And this week's no different. Um, actually, before we even get to this week, last week on the show, if you tuned in uh, on the inaugural episode, uh, we introduced you to the podcast, who we are, where we're from, uh, where we've been. Uh, answered your fan mail, discussed questing in New World, and uh, complete the first lore lesson on the genesis of New World. But before we do anything else, we have a listener who tweeted at us uh, on at Lore Seekers Cast on Twitter. This person has been struggling health-wise. And uh, so, Mimbo, I don't know if you're here tonight watching the live stream. I don't know if you're tuning in right now. But Mimbo on Twitter, I know you are struggling in the hospital with things with, with uh, the symptoms that you're dealing with. So hey, we're wishing you a speedy recovery, friend. And uh, this episode is dedicated to you. So thanks for yeah. being you. We appreciate you. Absolutely. I, I just want to make a, a quick shout out here for Mimbo. Mimbo has been a, a really awesome supporter of the show, and um, you know the, the things that we're doing, and also. Uh, my daughter is streaming now pretty regularly, and she's she's been over in uh, my daughter's chat uh, while she's streaming too. So it's it's just very much appreciated. The support like that for the, for the gaming community at large is pretty cool. Agreed. So thank you. We hope you feel better. Prayers and love to you. Yes. Now this week on the show, friends, again we're answering your mail. He sent mail, so we're answering it. Uh, we're talking new world and Steam. Uh, all things surrounding Gamescom, the developer Q&A just happened on Twitch. Uh, ooh, I didn't know about this one. Uh, and a lore lesson, and many more things, but we're also doing a lore lesson on what, Cash? It's This week we're calling the lore lesson Dismantling a Turnum. And the reason being is because, um, you know, there is a lot of cryptic things that you may have missed 
We started to touch on them last week, and this week it dives even deeper. Maybe some of the stuff is maybe even a little more foil hat, foil hat for you. But uh, we're basically screen by screen tearing apart a lot of the screenshots and videos and stuff that we're getting that are getting sent out by Amazon Game Studios, and we're picking up on the little hints that the lore team over there is putting out there for us to find. So that is the. That's really what the lore lesson this week revolves around. So we hope you enjoy it. It's going to be good. Hmm. Now, before we go anywhere, we have a special announcement. Actually, it's kind of cool. So for those listening, uh, we're doing our shows live now, live over on Twitch. The stream is here. And uh, anyway, we call it Lore Seekers Live. You can come be a part of the live show before all the edits, before all the, the craziness. <laughs> but uh, anyway... We have something really special we wanted to announce on this very first uh, Lore Seekers Live, and that is Ash. You wanna you put together this little ditty. You wanna you wanna take you wanna take the wheel. Yes, um, we have teased it a little bit, and our uh, our brother Celis over at uh, To Eternum Podcast has also been teasing this a little bit. But the Lore Seekers Company for New World is open. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Um, so, um, Jibs, how would they go about doing this? Before we kind of go into the into the description of how we are going to do this, Jibs, how can they be a part of this? So, well, how? Let's see. Which part you want me to you want me to start at the top or start at the bottom? Which... No, I'll handle all that. Oh, I mean, okay. Actually, it, like if somebody actually wants to to join. Yeah. How do they go about doing so? Okay, so I forgot to put the link for those who are live here, but it will be up after the show. <laughs> but for all of you who are listening, the show on release day, you're going to go to loreseekerscast.com. You're going to go navigate to the top, the header there. It's going to say join company or lore seeker company. Click the, you're going to mouse over it and you're going to click apply. Again, everyone who's here live, that will be up after the show. Everyone listening, that's how you do it. <laughs> I have Absolutely. a question. So, go. I have a question. I already applied and I got denied. Who do I talk to? Where's the HR department? Oh, uh, you're going to talk to HR there, eh? Okay. I just need to know. Yeah, I think it's the hair. I think you have too much ah, hair. Yeah, you have too much hair. We're offended by it. So, folks, here is our vision. And and uh, understand, too, that we are we are working cooperatively with uh, To Return and Podcast. And that is, as we said, that is our buddy Sullis. And uh, Sullis is going to be our company lead. Now, the way we're doing this is a little bit differently. So I'll explain. Our vision for the New World Lore Seekers company is basically creating a company that revolves around the following pillars. The first one being character immersion the second one is saying basically mission first and people always, which kind of follows the way, you know, the way the lore seekers have always done things. And then the last one, of course, seeking the lore. Now, the thing that's different is that this company is going to have an, uh, a light role play feel to it. And basically what that means is, no, we're not going to be you know, thou art and all that stuff all the time. Like, we're not doing that. But there are going to be certain times where we are going to have some role play flavor in there. And it's never required for you to participate. But for those that really want to immerse yourself in your character, the opportunity is going to be there. And the way we're going to do that is by having an ever evolving storyline that rotates around the company where members can take part in the experience as an option, again, to influence the overall story of the guild. So if you think of like the game story, we are going to have a story within that story to deliver that role play feel. Now, how are we gonna do this? Well, your characters may be tasked with in-game missions that we're, we, we will be releasing like every week. They may be tasked with out of game missions to keep you engrossed in the game even when you can't be in the game. This is all gonna take place in Discord. 
Now, what you would do with those missions is you would either complete them in game or complete them out of game. And then one person from your group would submit some type of after action report. And we're going to take some of those best submissions with RP flavor and we're going to add them to the storyline. So the storyline is constantly evolving. And then we're going to basically present those in some format on the Lore Seekers podcast. And then our friend Solace is going to do so on to a turn podcast. So it gives that additional avenue for folks to really engross in the game, engross in your character, um, and just kind of enjoy a bit of the game when you're outside of the game. Definitely new for us, uh, something that we're really excited about doing, and we think is going to flow very, very well with the story within New World. Yes, agreed. And I can uh, now say officially, it is actually there right now at loreseekerscast.com. <laughs> nice. <laughs> You're clutch, dude. So, mouse over company, <laughs> click apply. It's going to take you right to the application. Boom. All right. Good deal. Yes. Now, also, just as a, as a short caveat to that, keep in mind, you can apply now, but the day after the show releases, like we're going to be uh, uh, releasing this coming Monday, and we will be actually bringing people into the Discord most likely on Tuesday. So give it just a little bit of that discretionary time for us to get through all the stuff. Yeah, we got a lot, a lot, a lot to go through. It's going to be a good time. There's a lot of work. And that's, I was talking to uh, Cash today, driving home from work. Dude, I feel like this company is getting as, getting as much work as the show is. Like there's a lot, there's a lot going on behind the scenes because we really want to do it right. It's important. It's, you know, like New World's, clearly giving a lot of people an experience, you know, with, with everything that's built in the game. And, you know, we want to offer the same thing for you, the players, and, and have fun while doing it. So anyway, it's going to be a good time. I look forward to it because it's going to give that initial feel, right? And we enjoy, we're on a, we do a D&D &D thing and, and we enjoy playing our characters out. One of the things we do mostly is RP. So it's yeah. going to be, I think it'll be a fun experience for people to go through. We've thought a lot about it. We've basically wrote down a kind of a manuscript of what we're gonna, it's gonna be a really enjoyable thing. And I think you'll enjoy it. And we just wanna do something different and bring something new and refreshing to the community. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's gonna be a good time, especially the, a little bit of that RP aspect. They'll see, it's gonna be good. Um, so I have some, I have a problem, uh, qualm to pick. So last we checked in a turn, there's no mail system. No. Um, since last episode, people started bringing me their mail. I have no real, I don't. Are, wait a minute. Are you the mail system for Eternum? I, that'd be a really bad idea. There's going to be a lot of returns. It's going to get lost. I'll probably use some for campfire, you know, for, for a little tender. Yeah, clearly. Cause it looks like the dog chewed your homework up right there. Those are people's letters, man. But we could, you want to snoop around? We could probably look through a few of them. Well, I, I think the thing to understand is, yeah, th there is no mail service in a tournament right now. And I think uh, I think the reason being is because it is so freshly populated. Makes sense. I mean, actually, when you really think about it, it's not populated at all yet, but um, it's so freshly populated. They don't nobody has time. Like those mail routes are filled with freaking bears three times the size of humans that <laughs> eat humans for a freaking living. So, yeah, yeah, no one signed up for that job quite yet. All right. All right. Well. Uh, I have some mail, so maybe we should go through it. Okay. And, uh, as always, friends, for those of you tuning in, you can always mail us, uh, at loreseekers, at loreseekers, wow. Loreseekerscast at gmail.com, or if you want to get your voicemail here on the show, you can, 765-382-6961. Try to keep them around a minute or less. They feature you right here on the show. So, we have a couple here today. Got a couple of emails here we're going to go through. Uh, first one up is Cheryl. And Cheryl asks, what do you hope New World will bring to players that isn't already being done? There's something just be, is there something beyond, quote, just a New World and lore to lose yourself in? Not that that's not enough in and of itself. I think, um, you know what I think? I think because, like, I do have an opinion on this, but I think we should go to Champ on this one because, friends, if you if you listen to the first episode, I did not play the beta. 
I watched gameplay of the beta while these knuckleheads were in Discord doing it. So I think this this one should go to somebody who actually played first, and then I can give my perspective from, from the outside. Well, I'll start off with saying sounds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I had a moment where I was, I had just left the start zone, right? And I talked to that first guy, and he's like, hey, go over there and get me this, you know, because you always got to fetch something. And I'm over there, and I'm running through, and I hear a gun go off, and the round hit the tree behind me. Yeah. And I stopped, man. I really stopped. And I was like, was that real? Like, is that part of this game? And when I realized it was when I got the musket and I started shooting, JB, remember me and you ran around on the island just shooting things to hear what it sounded like. We used every single weapon yep. to give it a try. And every weapon's sound was amazing. When they hit the shield in front of you when you blocked or you got that good block because you timed it just right. Every bit of that was amazing. Yeah. I could lose myself in sound. I went and sat on a rock away away from everyone else and just listened to the environment, <laughs> the so animals, good. the water, everything about it just took my breath away. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's so good. The audio is. Oh, man. I'm going to sound like a broken record on that for a little bit. I know I am, but it is so good. Oh, well, man. dude, we know what makes you tick. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you could close your eyes and, and immerse yourself in audio and you would not hear a damn thing anybody around you said because it's that true. audio is what makes jibs tick. 100%. So that makes that makes plenty of sense to me. 100%. And it's so immersive. It's on a level that I don't think, at least in my time playing MMOs, I started with SWOTOR in 2012, 11, 12. At least in my time playing MMOs, I have never seen this kind of audio before in any game it's so immersive it's it, it just slurps you up and even people who i've seen you know like on social media having critiques about the game they always come back to yeah but dang that audio is awesome <laughs> you know like it's totally yeah. a thing it, it it's it's mind-blowing it's so so good for me i think you know like so when you say what do you hope new world will bring to players as not already being done to me sandbox it's going back to, um, it's going back to the old school MMO days. You're starting to kind of see that, and uh, I, I feel like I don't know if I said this on the episode last week or not. You know, de whatever players choose to do, whether they choose to stick around in New World or not, you know, the next MMO after that is Ashes of Creation. I feel like that this game is the doorway to that game if they want it to be a, a game like a, the way the Ashes Sandbox is set up. But when it comes to right. New World, like New World is the first MMO to bring back old school sandbox in a very, very long time. And it has, and you see that in the gathering system. You know, when you're, I, I like I, I lost myself gathering and I was cool with it. Like I'm cool with just, you know, tink, tink, tinking away on the, you know, mining or, or chopping down trees, which, by the way, the audio on that is insane, too. Um, you know, you're out there shooting a bear, and you can hear some dude. And you know someone, you see the tree fall. You don't know who it was, but you can hear that audio. Chop, chop, chop. Like, it's amazing. So, you know, to me, it's that sandbox open world experience, because that's where immersion is at. That's where it's found, and it's found in the audio. It's found in the, the mechanics and the gameplay and the systems. And I feel like... This game has a, oh man, it's got such a good foundation that they can build upon for years. Yeah, and I think that's, I think that's a really important thing as I, as I kind of bring in my perspective as an outsider. I think you hit, a, you hit on a couple like really key words. I think immersion is one of them. For gamers like us, immersion is a massive thing. Like we are old school MMO gamers who started playing MMOs years and years ago and have watched this evolution of these games, not only with content, but with the sound and you know visual quality and all these things. I mean, you look at look at like the original EverQuest, and it, back then it was revolutionary for what for what it was in in the uh, in the development the the life development of of games. But then you watch that evolution as games just get better and better and better and better and better. Yeah. And you know, the most recent game that, that we have as as a huge block to to compare is Elder Scrolls Online, which is 
freaking amazing game. I mean, that game has so much freaking content in it. Oh, and, yeah, dude. And when, like, when Elder Scrolls Online launched, there was a lot of, a lot of issues. There were a lot of people that did not, yeah. that were not happy with the way that that game launched. But then, you you know, ZeniMax Online Studios went and they, some of the community, fixed all of those things. And now the game, you know, sits very, very high um, at the top of the list of, of best playable MMOs. It absolutely does. And it's it's no Are different you? than the issues that were in, you know, like uh, Black Desert Online or were in games, even games like World of Warcraft, which yeah. we're certainly going to get into in a little while. But it just shows the evolution of these games. And one of the biggest things that caught me, and this is all kind of transition into what I saw as an outside perspective, not having played the beta, but being, you know, watching hours of the beta. What I saw was a game that is very refined. Like from the first time that I saw footage of New World and they took it away, went back to the drawing board, added a bunch of things and then brought back this launch package. This package that is going to be unwrapped on the 28th of September as the foundation of what this game can turn into. That is the package that I saw. Yeah. I didn't see, because I think it's very unfair to compare a game at its at its genesis, at its launch. You cannot compare that game to a World of Warcraft or to an EverQuest or to an Elder Scrolls Online because it needs that development time yes. for those things to be added into the game. But what I did see is a very polished product at its foundation and that's what made me happy and now to answer cheryl's question from my perspective what does it have other than just a new place to play and the lore to lose yourself in now when you take lore out that's like taking half my heart because everybody knows that's <laughs> where i live in these games so it's okay because I, I do have an answer for you but um, if you've removed the lore from that, because the lore in itself in this game has the potential to be insanely good. We'll talk about that later. But you remove lore, what did I see? I saw immersion that you mentioned, an incredibly immersive game. And you, you add the visuals, you add the sound, you add the, ga the gathering and the crafting and the fact that you truly feel lost in this huge, massive playground that is one so immersion is a huge factor yeah the towns feel alive you can gather anything you can chop any tree down in the game pretty much um the fishing and this is just a side thing the fishing in this game is insane oh. it's its own fishing simulator yep which of course adds to its immersion now for me you add on top of that the fear of pvp at all times now that is optional you can flag for this but that fear of pvp reminds me of old school shadowbane old school um world of warcraft on pvp servers which is where i mostly played where you have that fear of being hunted everywhere you go sometimes you're the hammer sometimes you're the freaking nail and let's be real i was usually the nail but <laughs> I'm not a great PvP -er, but you know what? Like I'm I'm willing to learn it because I love that aspect of fear when you're out in the world. It does add to your immersion. And you know, if there's anybody from uh in the chat from from Elder Scrolls Online, which there probably is, because we had a bunch of friends come come and, and join us on the show from from Elder Scrolls Online. It gives the feel that you have in Cyrodiil everywhere. And that, to me, adds to the immersion. So to, to answer your question, Cheryl, I hope that does an answer your question, and thanks for submitting it. But that is truly what I feel adds above and beyond the other things, just like a new world to explore and just lore. Those are the additional options that I really feel drug me in. Yeah, there's a lot to this game. There's a lot to love, honestly. Right. There's a lot to, and I can't wait. I cannot wait. The moment that Champ and I get to talk to you after you first step foot in this game and you feel the combat, which has total Diablo vibes, total like slowed down combat, slower pacing. 
Dynamic. Con oh, it's so, it's so good. Well, see, you'll know, you know me because I'll probably take an hour building the character <laughs> and then another four to five hours trying to figure yeah, out what freaking name I want to name my character. <laughs> I'm, we'll see, be I'm level working 15. through that. Yeah, we, right, yeah, we we'll be level 15 and he'll be like, hey guys, where are we at? Um, I'm, You can't get here because if you walk past that wolf right there, he's going to kill you. Hey, going, should nah. I go with the red mustache or the brown one? By the end of it, you know what? And you can't rush him. You can't rush him. If you rush no. him, then he'll be like six, seven levels in. He's like, God dang it. Guys, I got to log out. Why? I'm out. I am not happy with the color of this mustache. <laughs> Why? Because my character looks like ass. <laughs> well, you shouldn't have picked oh. a stupid looking guy when you picked him in the first place. Okay. I mean, that's your own problem. <laughs> Oh, anyway, Cheryl, thank you so much for the mail. And uh, next up, uh, Shiloh Waltz. Shiloh is a good friend of ours. It's from, uh, I believe now on hiatus, uh, GG Party Chat, Xbox podcast. Uh, he says, Lore Seekers, greetings from your favorite heart attack Xbox gamer extraordinaire. I don't know what that means. I hope your heart's okay. I know, I've been <laughs> I've been interested in New World since its announcement, but I'm afraid my old laptop won't be able to run it, so I'll have to live vicariously through you guys. A few questions for you, inspired by your altaholicism during your stints in ESO. What is your day one first character build slash weapon spec specialization? And how many days slash weeks before said character goes rip, Cash? <laughs> Come on, man! <laughs> also, what is one weapon you hope makes it into the game at some point? Excited to see where this new journey takes you. Oh, I see what you did there. And what wild and crazy things all those 17th century metalheads are up to. Cash, so... Oh, never mind. That's your answer. <laughs> <laughs> literally reading my <laughs> notes. Read your notes. Oh, boy. Oh, Dang it! Who put a question mark on the teleprompter again? <laughs> He'll read anything he's put on the teleprompter, but you can't do that. <laughs> oh out. dear lord! Okay, oh. um, yeah. So, so a couple things here, and thanks, Shiloh, for the uh, for the email. So, the first one is there is going to be no killing the character because there's absolutely no need for it in New World. Like it is a one character game. <laughs> So first of all, what you get one character per server, but the reason for that is because you can, you can literally respec and all you gotta do is change weapons and you can change your spec. There's no classes. Your class is the weapons you choose, which like, I love that. So now I can concentrate on one character and if I don't like what I'm playing, I just swap the weapons and then you start building those weapon lines. So. That kind of nixes the uh, the part about cash killing a thousand characters over and over. Um, I'm still kind of up in the air, but I think so far for for my first build, which I'm I'm gonna try out in the uh, in the upcoming open beta, I am really heavily leaning towards bow and ice gauntlets. Oh. But yes, I cannot shake the feeling of going like full mage with. A fire staff and a life staff. You so, really should. Just do it, dude. Are you, are you trying to get inside my head right now? Because yeah. it's working. Is it working? Okay. <laughs> Don't take much. you can't sway me. You should know at this point in our, in our relationship, you cannot sway me like that. You just do have to it. put like a little, just just a little plant, a little seed in my body, and then I'm like, oh <sighs> damn, I got I got to go back to the drawing board on this one. See, that's why I killed so many damn characters in my past MMOs. Yeah. Because I can't freaking figure it out, so. Oh. Battle yeah. Mage. Yeah, so anyway, oh, to answer the last part, what one weapon do you hope that makes it into the game at some point? This is a wall of crazy toss. I would absolutely love to see a healing line, which, you know, would probably go right along with the, um, with the life staff with a tome and sigil. Okay. Like, could you imagine your character whipping out a freaking book and holding a sigil out like that to do healing? Yeah. That is sexy. Yeah. Yeah, that is. And you know, the great thing about it too, is the ability to, you can, you can really, cause the amount of attacks, right. And the way the weapons are built, they're not heavily complex right now, and maybe they will be in the future, but right now they're simple enough to where you can try different specs. So you might not like the Ice Gauntlet, right? I mean, you might get in the game and be like, you know what? 
it's cool, but it just doesn't feel right because you're that type of player, Cash. I mean, you're if it don't feel right, you ain't playing it, which yeah, is why thing, I would too can cold we have on a moment my hand. of silence. Can we have a moment of silence for all the alts you've killed over the years? Because I know you yeah. have genocide, sir. And that's not cool. I've that's killed a cool. lot. You've killed a lot of your alts. But the good thing about this game, like we said, and it's per cluster, as was pointed out by someone in chat. It's by cluster. So you can only make one character between five different servers because it's whatever the cluster is. So you really have to commit to that. You're going to have a good time with it because you're going to sit on the build a character screen for about a year. Yep. <laughs> yeah. well, as, no, as long as my character like looks... As long as my character looks the way I want him to look, I think I think it'll be fine because I'll try out every freaking weapon in the game until I finally figure out or not what I want to play and just kind of go that way. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty heavily leaning on that bow just because it gives you, like I want to be able to have that whole being out in the wilderness and hunting feel. Like I, I want that. I want that. I want that. <laughs> oh, I haven't said that in a while. Huh? Oh, that's been, that one's been <laughs> off the... Uh... <laughs> off the old usage anyway um so I, I think for you know no what no champ champ where's your head weapon what are you using I day one be two-handed mace and oh. sword board oh okay so i want to be yeah. able to hold the line that's you and still slam can i catch up on this with the wall of crazy weapons mm. i want and i know there's a there's a spear in the game right yes yeah no Yes. Yeah. I but I want them to give me a fighting style with a spear and a shield like a Spartan. Ooh. Oh, so God. there's three or four, right? Think about it. If you could do oh, phalanx yes. with three or four other dudes to where nobody can get through you, right? At the door. You're holding that door. The door fell and you've got four dudes run up with shields and spears and they're just standing there hacking at people. And those people can't get through because their defenses are there. We're got people behind throwing buffs and heals. I'm just saying that could be an epic moment at a doorstop. Or like a PvP in a one of these in one of the places where you fight, right? Yeah, because there is there is character collision, right? Yes, I that's believe a, so. That's a thing. That's a good I question. Think. I'll be honest, I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah, because I, I yeah, walked I over a couple of people's bodies, but I don't know. We're <laughs> I've stepped over a couple of dead corpses, but you know, I think uh, I think that's actually a, a good question for maybe us to to dip into because because could you imagine having that makeup like at at a settlement door when you're trying to take it like you shall not pass type of thing yeah i think champ's looking it up so anyway that's awesome Chips, where'd you land um for me i am going to go with uh at least my head starting out i'm going to go with musket and spear i'm leaning towards spear yeah that's dude that's that's gonna rule yeah, I'm leaning, to, I'm, I'm leaning toward those right now. I've, I feel like today I've I've been on the struggle, just trying to nail that down. And then I just kept reading over stats. What's the primary, secondary stat? You know, like, what's going on? And uh, I thought I'd do the Frost Gauntlet for reasons we'll talk about later, because I know the stat that's based around that. And I was like, maybe I could venture into that. But, yeah, man, I'm thinking musket. Musket and spear. I think that makes plenty of sense and for it's the same thing as like the bow and the spear was a very very um uh, coveted combination in the closed beta I, i've seen a lot of videos on people using that and, and it's going to be no different with the musket and spear because you basically have you have that option for range and then once something closes the distance like they can close the distance right into the point of your freaking spear yeah and it that is a lethal combo yeah and honestly it's the spear is the secondary like First and foremost, I'm going to be ranged working the musket. I watched a video. It was an older video, so a lot of the things did not apply anymore. But I watched a person sit back, crouched, you know, just covered by the tall grass. You couldn't see him. And he was watching two people fight on the road, duking it out, doing their thing, you know. This dude just starts teeing off. He, he takes a knee, you know, and then he starts teeing off. And it was amazing. It was like watching a sniper in new world and i loved it oh that's dirty i loved it so much that's dirty and uh yeah. so that's that's totally my main focus is the musket everything is that i'm doing is to support the musket so if they get close you know i'm going to use the spirit to get them back and try to drop more shots on now if i could pick any weapon 
Be a new world. I want a flail and a shield. Whoa. Just went medieval on us. Yeah. I want flail. I don't know. Was, a, was a flail a thing in the 17th century? No, no, it wasn't. But neither was an ice gauntlet, so I think we're okay. But it would it'd be lore friendly, bro, because there's it, it wasn't just the 17th century that, that landed on Eternum. Right? There's been That's true. There's been hundreds of years worth of knuckleheads that have landed on Eternum. So yeah, I'm sure somewhere maybe buried in the in the dirt or something. Yeah. Find a flail. Yeah. I just think it'd be cool, especially if you're fighting someone with a shield. I don't know if this could even technically work, but you know, I just picture that you know, that spiked head on that flail just getting stuck in someone's shield. Or their oh, yeah. you know, a chunk of wood watching it, you know, like spray out of their shield. Um, but anyway. I fell in love that with that awesome. weapon in For Honor, and I just think it would be great to play in New World. So, yeah, could you imagine sitting your character sitting there idle and that thing's just swinging it? Oh yeah, absolutely. That oh, so cool. The sound. Oh. Oh yeah. The sounds yeah. they have already. Could you yeah. imagine what they would do with it? Oh man. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah. You know what? I, you know what I was even thinking, and this is like Indiana Jones type thing, but a whip. Oh okay. I know it's like the, whoa, that one's different. All right, it would be freaking awesome. And you like imagine being able to like as a skill, like you whip that thing out and freaking pull somebody to you, <laughs> like or oh, a disarm. No. You come here, <laughs> or a disarm, a disarm. Grab their weapon, yeah. Throw it over your shoulder and they have to get around you to get it. And because there yeah. is collision, if you have a weapon drawn out, then you would be you could block off, yeah. Switch to the shield and something, and just kind of bounce them around, slam them with your shield, stun them up run into them. I mean, you could really work a good uh, combo off of snatching a weapon from somebody. Dirty. I dig it. Yeah. All right. Well, friends, thank you so much for your mail. And as always, please, if you want to be involved, you want to get involved, go ahead. LordSeekersCast at gmail.com. Get your emails and uh, maybe put them right on the show. Or again, you can call us. Grandma will pick up. She'll say hello. You leave your voicemail. Uh, 765-382. Cash is going to say something. He's going to lean into his mic. <laughs> Seven six <laughs> seven six five three eight two sixty nine sixty one. It's time for the news. Let's just go ahead and jump right in. Oh, yeah. Eternum's news has arrived. All right. Well, we got a couple mentions here, real quick. And by the way, in case you haven't noticed already, we're like forty minutes in. This is gonna be a long episode, so hope you enjoy it. Eh. Uh, but uh, you know what? but uh. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a couple mentions. One, uh, New World is now publishing what seems to be, so far, weekly lore videos. Now, we're not going to cover those in news. We're going to be we're going to use those in lore lessons, and I think you'll see why once Cash actually, actually does it. But anyway, we want to make a mention here. We had a brand new video put together on the Ancients from the Tales of Eternum series on uh, Play New World's uh, YouTube, YouTube channel. It was awesome. It was very, very good. It was good to see the ancients in action and everything that surrounds them. And, uh, you know, we don't want to spoil anything for you, but you need to go watch it. We're going to talk about it. We don't want to spoil anything for you, but they're really ancient. But they're really old. This forest they're is really old. old. <laughs> uh, so anyway, go check that out. Also, a quick mention. Uh, I don't know if anyone knew this. It's coming to us from .esports.com. New World is second most wish-listed game on Steam. Which that was kind of an interesting statistic. So, uh, New World apparently is the most wish listed as the. Wait. Yeah, the second most oh, wish, li wish listed <laughs> games on Steam, according to stats from SteamDB. Uh, Dot Esports says New World is uh, beating out titles such as the upcoming entry in the Battlefield franchise, Battlefield 2042, which looks amazing. And. Left for Dead spiritual successor back for blood. I could definitely see New World beating both of those out. Like Battlefield is like, well, let's reskin it, make it ten years later. Oh, one. I don't know, man. This Battlefield <laughs> looks pretty legit. Oh, uh, yeah, it looks pretty fun, but I mean, it's. I could see it edging that one out, and you know, Left for Left for Dead super fun game. Like, there's no, there's no doubt. But this isn't freaking MMO. Like, you have cult followings for him oh absolutely like generational you know yeah and it's it's been a span like i'm not so sure if y'all been paying attention to the mmo spaces but it's been a span since we've had a new triple a mmo come out 
When did it's been, uh, it's been a long time? When would the last one have been? Oh, not was it Black Desert Online? Black Desert. What year was that? Twenty sixteen. I don't know. I'm gonna get fact checked. I'm gonna get canceled. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. They were wrong on their years. That's it. I'm going to Twitter. Here's a topic. (laughs) (laughs) Discuss. Hang on, I'm looking it up. Oh, all right, you look that up. But uh, no, I, I, it's been a while. I know that's that's for sure. That's what makes it so special. And honestly, that's probably that's one of the reasons why we're so hyped, man. How do you spell dessert? December of 2014. 2014. So what was that? Six, seven, six years? Yeah. Yeah, it is. And I'm sure there's probably seven other years? ones that have, that have come out that maybe we missed. Like I know there's, um, what's the top down one? That's actually pretty fun. Albion? If Yeah, if you're 14. Yeah, hey, it's, uh, I enjoyed Albion. it. <laughs> Albion. That was fun to dabble. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know why you got to kick right in the nuts. <laughs> Got them both. So there's that. All, All right. right. Got me back. I'm back. All right. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, pretty cool little, st- uh, little statistic. Uh, anyway, second most wish listed game on Steam. Now, a big, th- we have a lot of coverage coming from uh, Gamescom. And of course, there's a Q&A. So we're just going to jump into this right now. So for those of you who don't know, Gamescom happened this past week. And normally, it's, is it normally in Germany? Correct. Cologne. Cologne. I always mm-hmm. think of, you know, the spritz. Anyway, uh, so yeah. Col- spritz. Spritz. A little refresh. Oh, spritz of cologne. Oh. Yeah, you know. It's a little Roger, I was s- like, no, that's not how you say it. It's cologne. It's not spritz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, clearly that's where I was going on my second try. Uh, but anyway, uh, so yeah, they did it all online, you know, digital, of course, with the pandemic and all that. Uh, but anyway, we got some really, really cool news. And uh, we're just going to kind of dive in. They're really more bullet points than anything. But uh, so for those of you who didn't see and those here on stream, you saw it right at the tippity top of the uh, the opener of the stream, the brand new Chart Your Fate trailer. That was pretty cool. If you haven't seen that on YouTube, you need to go see it. I took that trailer because I do recall hearing at some point that New World will not release any content without Easter eggs. Yep. So I went, this actually, it makes my, my lower heart break just a little bit. Cause I went through frame by frame by frame and I could not find <laughs> so Easter egg. I could not find it except for there was a female all kind of ornately done up like toward the end. And I want to know who the F that was. So maybe that was Easter egg, but other than that, like I could not find it. I think it was at the beginning to show me after the show. Okay, so uh, for those of you who don't know, there was a, it, it's kind of like, if you've played the beta, it's, it's. they did a really good job, honestly. They married the intro with a brand new video experience. So part of it was, you know, a conquistador looking character sitting down with a mysterious character in a tavern, which was totally appropriate and perfect in every fashion. And uh, anyway, sitting there talking and he touches this box. It only touches the box. That's when everything flashes. I honestly, it happened so fast. The flashes happened so fast. I didn't even know there was anything in these frames. And then, one thing we like to do over on our Twitter feed on um, some important trailers is we will go through them frame by frame and take screenshots and we'll post them all. Lo and behold, there it was. There was, let's see, two... Three different images within the that one flash that we saw. And uh, it looked like some kind of hooded character with some kind of tentacles, you know, on their on their face. Um, another another looked like a statue with vines, like black vines coming out. And uh, I think the last one was the Conquistador's eyes glowing red. But anyway, it's pretty cool. Yeah, how many frames did you pull out of that? So normally when we were in ESO... I would normally walk away on average with maybe like 18, 19. Holy crap, man. That trailer was so good. We walked away with no less than 47. I don't think. Yeah, that's insane. I think it was that's so many. Insane. It was so many. Uh, there's so the Gosh, that trailer was so good. It showcases all the professions. You saw a character in a cloak. Yes. We've been wanting that 
for a very long time. Yeah, it's a very, very pretty joke. Yeah. Run around, it was flowing in the wind as he was running. Yeah. And we were like, wait a minute. Let's hit the rewind button so I can take a look at that in slow motion. We're going to look at that one more time. It was awesome. That yeah, was absolutely good looking trailer, really showcasing all the game. You know, being on Gamescom, one of the biggest, um, biggest conventions over on the eastern side of the world. It was pretty awesome to see. So they showed everything battles, you know, PvP, crafting, um, exploration, just fighting mobs, all kinds of things, expeditions. So, anyway, great trailer. Go watch it. Highly recommend you watch. Second of all, guys, open beta is coming. September 9th through the 12th. Yeah, we're going to get back in the game before it drops, fellas. Yes, we're like going to be back in the game. Actually, face, wait for <laughs> we're going to be back in the game, actually, uh, very quickly. Um, and this is actually going to be the first time that I'm going to get to dive in and enjoy it, play. And uh, I, I'm excited. I'm going to do a lot of running around. I'm not going to touch. I'm only going to touch the content that I have to touch. I'm probably just going to be going around doing a lot of nerdy screenshots and looking at environments and exploring and, you know, maybe I may be dabbling in the crafting a little bit, but I am one of those people that do not want to ruin his uh, launch experience at all. So I was, I'm happy to get in so I can actually play the game and get my hands on it and feel it, you know, and see all the pretty things. But I, absolutely i'm gonna save that experience for launch of diving into the quest lines and doing the main story quests and you know i'll probably be spending a lot of time in like the starting areas oh you should honestly i fell in love with monarch bluffs you know i was thinking about maybe trying different weapons out because oh, once yeah. i grabbed that warhammer and i said mace earlier and somebody caught it in chat and was wondering if i dropped a teaser and the question is did i <laughs> but anyway warhammer man once i grabbed that warhammer it was it i couldn't put anything else i just enjoyed the rhythm of it and i know you two are planning on playing some ranged characters i'm planning on being all melee because i just like being in that in the mix uh, yeah. you know from the the paladin pvp days of oh, wow gosh. to i yeah. always played death knight paladin warrior whatever whatever was melee i loved playing those classes and that's what i'm gonna stick with right I'll try not to shoot you in the back. I'll try my best. <laughs> That's totally but fitting just, for you. You just hold him over there. I got, I got it. I got it. Oh, it was, oh, it was really hard to hold a full draw for like four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you got to let it go to hit him. You got to let only, it go to hit him. You can't aim I only, forever. I only brought one arrow. It's a flesh wound. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so yeah. It's going to be, you know, I'm going to, I know we have a lot of plans of things we're working on, uh, goals and things we're going to be trying to work towards while we're in the, in the beta for, from a content perspective. But I think I'm going to try a full mage. I think I'm going to try an Inferno staff slash, um, ice build and see oh. just kind of like what that feels like. Cause I know I'll probably not play that when we first start. So like ice gauntlets, Inferno staff on the front bar and. Yeah. Fire staff front bar and okay, cool. Yeah, I'm gonna Damn. I'm gonna dabble. Do a little dibbly dabble. But uh anyway, do that and just enjoy it, man. There's so much to enjoy about this game. And so there are some quick facts, by the way. Um regarding this open beta, in case you want to know. You know, you can absolutely post uh, you can share, record, or broadcast your beta content or gameplay. Now granted, some of these items may change by the time the game launches, so just keep that in mind. So if you're making a YouTube video, you may need to update it. Um, server capacity is not going to represent the full server capacity at come launch, but this this open beta will house more players than the closed beta did. So you can look forward to that. Uh, your progress will be wiped. Just keep in mind, anything you do here will not carry over to when the game drops. So that will be wiped. Oh, how many people are going to cry about that one? Oh, you know what? There was a time when that would have bummed me out, but now I'm like, we have nothing but time. Nothing but time. Start yeah. over, do it again. It's so good. I, but it's, I mean, it's like, I don't want to say this like I know anything about like game development because I only know things about game development from an outsider's perspective and having, you know, been a gamer and a content creator. But 
I just don't think like people don't like quite understand the reason for a, an alpha and a, a beta closed and open. Like the reason for it is to test stuff out and find issues with the build. Yeah. And then make the build better and then relaunch said build. Like I care, you know, saving progress. I It's not intended for that. I can... I think we, we had talked about it like there there has to they have to do another type of test. Yeah, I never thought it would be an open beta, but I think I honestly think and, and like Bruce, I know you and I talked about this. I think what happened is they had so much success with this closed beta, like listen to those numbers, right? Two billion minutes watched on Twitch. One million players played during the closed beta. So like, you know, like I said, Bruce and I talked about this. They knew what they had. They realized that they had something special and that they absolutely had to maybe change some things before this launch. Yeah. Right. Right. And the good thing about it, too, is, is what I liked was they were willing to push their game back to bring us what they know they should bring, right? Yes. They didn't rush it. I can remember being a World of Warcraft player and it didn't matter if it was ready or not. We'll patch it. You're getting it when we said you're getting it because that's just how it works. You know, it's not, we're not going to listen to beta testers. We're not going to listen. These, these developers for this game, listen to us already. They listen to the beta testers. They listen to the people who said, Hey, this would be better if you did this. This is out of sorts. We need to figure this out and they won't be able to fix everything right away. Right. But the big majors, what I'm looking for is when they put the story back in the game. Oh, yeah. That's exactly. what I can't wait for. A lot of people said there's holes in this. There's something just doesn't. There's no flow. I said it. But then I remembered. Well, they, they took the main part of the storyline out. And if the storyline in the game can keep up with the little Easter eggs that we're finding. Dudes, this is going to be a lore seeker heaven. Oh, for reals. Yeah, we said it last episode. There's no, I don't think there's been a game that represents seeking lore better than this one. It's, you have to, you have to really dig. Really, dig. look at the cash's smile. Do you see this? Yeah, that's it. This is me. This is me virtually smiling. That you're probably. telling you can't see it, but you can hear how my voice inflects when I'm smiling. So, <laughs> yeah, that is, dude, I, I, I'm telling you, I, you, you get me running. Don't you dare wind up my freaking lore windy because I, I will not shut the F up. And you guys both know this. I am in love with what this lore could turn into. Yeah. Yep. Because there is that beautiful marriage between the real world and this alternate reality of the 17th century, which I was not even interested in. But now, having read through some of the stuff and then having been able to dive into some of the things you're going to see in our lore lesson, you will realize how far we have deep dove into what this lore can truly become, friends. So, like, that makes me really, really happy to, to hear that, to talk about that. But, you know, to kind of close this, this thought up, I, I really do believe that the beta, the closed beta, was a holy crap moment for Amazon Game Studios. And they went, we might be on the verge of something pretty big. Absolutely. You know? I mean, there's... Yeah. Oh, I'm, I know I'm going to sound like a broken record a lot uh, of these first few episodes, but it, it's a, the first major release, and we've now discovered it's in seven years. It's funded by Amazon, which is... There is no end to that pocket of money that you could... <laughs> you are, are they kind of a big deal? I think... I don't know. I hear they have Amazon Prime. Excellent shipping. Well, the last time I was in their apartment, it smelled of rich mahogany, and they had mineral leather brown <laughs> books. 60% of the time, it works every time. time. <laughs> Got bits of panther in there, so you know it's good. I'm going to be honest with you. That smells like pure gasoline. Oh, anyway, so... <laughs> Um, so yeah, you know, this, it's so exciting on so many levels for MMO players, content creators. I feel like this is full circle for me, really like 2012 hype for a new MMO starting casting all over again. It's just, it's so, there's so much to look forward to with this. And so anyway, I think, you know, yeah, I think you're right. I think they were, they were surprised. 
I mean, that's a lot of people. They said uh, in the stats, over 1 million players played during the closed beta. Over 2 billion minutes watched on Twitch. And you know what? They, they talked about the open beta dates. But you know what? Before I say any more, because there was a really nice tease that was laced into all of this, and everyone here who's at the live stream, we're going to check this out. This is uh, game director Scott Lane joined Jeff Kaylee, Kylie, I'm sorry, in the uh, quick interview post trailer. Let's, uh, let's take a listen. That was the Gamescom trailer for New World, and joining me now is the game director from New World, Scott Lane. Uh, Scott, how you doing? I'm great, Jeff. How are you? I'm great. You guys had a, a very successful closed beta test this summer, right? Tell us about it. Yeah, we were thrilled and, and, and humbled by how that went. You know, over 1 million people showed up to play, and there were 2 billion minutes watched on Twitch. And it was just so fun for the team to get to play alongside everyone, watch those streamers, and we got so much good feedback. The team's even more focused on shipping a great game than they were before. Now, the game is coming out uh, September 28th, but before then, there will be a public beta for fans? Yeah, we're opening it up to the public from September 9th through the 12th. So if you're not familiar with New World, come check it out. And if you want more information on how to participate, you can go to www.newworld.com. Before we go, I want to ask you about uh, post-launch content. Uh, what do you have uh, planned for players after uh, September 28th? Well, we are completely committed to making Eternum a living, breathing world that players will come back to again and again for years to come. So for us, launch is really the beginning. It's day one. We're going to continue to add features well beyond launch, and we're going to continue engaging with the players to help drive our goals and where we take the game. I can't get specific on what we're talking about, but I can give you some hints. Um, players have already been asking for more supernatural elements and more weapons. So we got a pretty cool way to combine those into a deliverable that they'll see shortly after launch. And then players have been asking for more group content and expeditions. So we're working toward that as well. And then, you know, with the holidays right around the corner, I'm pretty excited to see what that might look like on Eternum. All right. Thanks so much for joining us, Scott. Thanks, Jeff. So, yeah. Post launch content. They're already talking about it. They're already thinking about it. Did you guys see those two gauntlets that were there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, looked like... I don't know what that was. The one that was covered in fur? Like this dark metal and it looked like he was grasping some kind of ring. Yeah, so... Um, may or may not have watched a couple of videos on YouTube in relation to some leak footage a few weeks ago data mine data mine yeah so there's that uh those are void gauntlets. they uh they are they were data mined um and i yeah you know data mine stuff you never quite know whether or not that was like somebody at amazon game studios going so uh <laughs> somebody <laughs> take a little look see at this we're gonna slide this but, under the hotel um, door there we go like typically we really don't cover leaked stuff oh no. we really don't so the video's out there if you want to see it go look at it it's on it's on obviously it's on the youtubes but there's some really sexy stuff on that video <laughs> that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> just go look at the video for yourself <laughs> ah, that's all good yeah so, and I like the way how in this video, when they, when they're talking to Scott Lane, it was like, yeah, so we have some uh, new stuff coming in. It's like flash, flash <laughs> right on the screen, super fast. And you're like, whoa, what was that? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> what did he just flash on the screen? Rewind, rewind. Yep. But yeah. So at least like if the things that are in that super sexy eye candy data mine video footage is true, they probably just confirmed at least one thing true yeah yeah and that makes you wonder if the rest of the stuff is true yeah. hey up look and the rest did of i the slip stuff. up yeah to give a teaser <laughs> yeah but yeah look at that 
Yeah, How these gauntlets awesome look insane. Is that thing? Yeah, they uh, they okay. honestly, for those who are here at the live show, they, it's basically a uh, one that looks like it's wrapped in furs, uh, old bones and and old chainmail, and just looks like claws on the end of it. Absolutely gnarly. And then you you uh, actually that looks like the one on the right is a head of a fox strapped to the top of that gauntlet. <gasps> Oh, yes. Yeah, I mean, your attention to detail is quite impressive. Yeah. Oh, thank I, you, I, I, uh, holy <laughs> crap. That's bitching, dude. Yeah. The other set, if you switch back to the other set, yeah. what I love about it is is some of it looks like light yeah. stuff, right? right? So, And one of them looks like ice. So uh, is the one on, you know what I mean? Are, are they trying to show us something? Is the green and the gauntlet on the left mean it's poison? Uh, see, is, that, is that what it's for right that's what i want to know Be and, and i right. think that that's one of the you know honestly at the end of the day probably one of the best things about this game is it's being classless they can take this as far as they want to go honestly with all the weapons in the entirety of history up to that point and whatever kind of you know mystical thing they want for instance gauntlets like this magical gauntlets right. you know like you, you have so many options and you know poison sounds amazing you know we've heard rumors of the void gauntlet i am at you know i could totally see some kind of nature thing going you know um i don't know man like those that one gauntlet with the heads of animals on it that looked gnarly already looked a little decayed i'm like okay what's happening here but it, like the one thing that i love about the about the the armor and and a lot of the gear is it's so vastly different in the game like the aesthetic of the game is so vastly different in its presentation to you like some of the armor looks like it came from like 11th or 12th century templars some of the armor looks like it came from conquistadors at a, in a different time frame some of the armor looks like you're a you know uh, 16th or 17th century hunter trapper there's so many different aesthetics to the game and it's like like i said you're gonna get me you're gonna get me revving up here but um it absolutely is an amazing time and even though like i was not interested in in this i was like colonial like oh, what's that oh my god there's so many avenues they can go with this lore yeah and there's so many because all of these other explorers from all these past generations have all been to Eternum. Yep. And there's proof of it there. And you can, hey, you don't like this armor. I'm going to go look for some 12th century armor. Right. Go get it and you put it on. Yep. And what's crazy too is the expeditions. Think about it. Yeah. If they themed them at different eras, so you could have a, you could have corrupted Spartans. You could have corrupted pirates. You could have corrupted anything. They literally, because of where they put it on the map and the fact that throughout our entire civilization there's been travel across oceans there's been commerce between right so there's so many different eras they could go into yeah and yeah. like you said weapons en enemies the sky's the limit they're not tied down to a fantasy style or you know mmo and they're using our own history how much more connected are you to a world that's your world and then you add that, that mystical element, that scary, because some of that stuff, dude, it's it's kind of spooky, right? It's got that, you know, spiritual, demonic kind of feel to it where eyes are red. And it's just they can do anything with the content because they can corrupt any era of any generation. Champ, you had me at pirates. Yeah. Just, just so you know. I knew I did. Speaking yeah. of pirates, that that octopus thing. What if that was like a corrupted Blackbeard? Oh, oh my right? I mean, gosh. I mean, come on, guys. Right? That, that'll be my first New World tattoo. I don't normally get tattoos or game related, but that'd be it. I love that life. Oh, all right. So, anyway, we'll, we'll wrap this one up here. We hope you watched uh, Gamescom because you were able to acquire um, the. Uh, watch the opening stream. I'm sorry. You could acquire the Verdant Trapper skin from Twitch Drops. Uh, that was a thing. Uh, you just had to watch 15 minutes of it. So anyway, we hope the picture's up. If not, I'm sure that they're going to do all kinds. I mean, it's Amazon owns Twitch. So, you know, just, I mean, everybody 
who watched the opener. It all, I think at one point it was 82,000 people, you know, got this skin. So trust me, I imagine they're going to probably do some more. So anyway, uh, moving on, uh, there was a Q&A from uh, August 26th. And uh, there was quite a few developers on there. And uh, Cash, I know they were discussing quite a bit about New World and some of the new features coming up. Yeah, they did. It was actually part of um, of Gamescom uh, again. Gamescom, con, yeah, that one. Uh, they had a couple of hosts, and they did just a quick Q and A. It wasn't too long. It was probably five ten minutes long. Uh, with uh, the game design manager Michael Willette and the art director Charles Bradbury, and it was a basic like it wasn't there wasn't anything groundbreaking, but it was still fun to watch. And they had a just a general conversa conversation about New World and its features, and like some of the high points that they hit. There was an explanation that it was asked how how they could describe what the game world was. And I love this explanation by Michael Willett. He said, basically, it's a haunted wilderness on a supernatural island of Eternum where players are tasked with battling back the forces of corruption. To call it a haunted wilderness, I was like, ooh, love those descriptive words. So that one kind of caught my attention. Oh, absolutely. The, they did some uh, some closed beta stats where, you know, they talked about how many hours played and stuff, and we've kind of hit, hit on those already. But um, one of the questions that kind of made me laugh, and I had no idea about this, but they were asking the developers what some of their favorite beta moments were. And I had no idea, but somebody actually got married in one of the churches in game. Oh, really? Yeah, like, I don't, I don't know if somebody actually got married or if they just like their characters got married like maybe it was a husband and wife you know a uh, couple that were that were playing the game and they got married in the church but it's really cool i thought i thought that was pretty cool and then the one that made me laugh was that um some of the streamers were because you know there's proximity voice chat in the game right which i think is amazing and a terrible idea at the same time because of all the <laughs> pvp penis that's going to be going on uh, yep. yes friends i did say pvp penis i have resurrected that term so anyway that with all that going on so, uh, somebody was like uh they were some of the streamers were in the towns and they were like playing their instruments yep and serenading players as they came into town with like Boys to men and such. Boys to men. <laughs> Little ditties. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious, actually. That was, yeah, I remember seeing that YouTube video. It was pretty funny. I could ac absolutely see that going on. Like, remember in, remember in old school Lord of the Rings online? Oh, dude. Where, yes. is that, like, that's all any, that's all a whole bunch of people did. That was their gameplay for the night, is they would get together with their friends in their, um, what do they call that in that game? What was like a, a guild in that game? Oh, uh, wow. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. remember. It's been a while. It's kind of like company. It wasn't yeah. like a, something like that. It wasn't anyway. Guild. I know that. Something no, else. Some, somebody will probably hit it up in chat. But um, they get together and... Maybe, what's that? Maybe Fellowship? Fellowship. That's it. Got it. Well done. They would get together and play their instruments. And the instruments would like sync up. So you were literally getting like a band. It was pretty cool. I would love to see something like that in New World. I think that would be super cool. Absolutely. Chat says, uh, this is from Jonas Octavian says, I love the proximity chat. I was chatting. I was chasing somebody. I was chasing someone trying to kill them yelling, quote, Sir, I'm trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty. <laughs> Well oh. played, Jonas, which actually that's the perfect segue oh. into the next point. Oh, that's so good. Mounts. <laughs> <laughs> that's another thing they talked about was oh. mounts. Um, it was actually a very crafty question by one of the uh, hosts where they said, uh, you know, there's been a lot of chatter about the fact that there's no mounts in the game yet, which there's a good lore lesson for it uh, or a good lore reason for it. But she asked, has there been a change now, very cryptically, Mr. Willette says, nothing that we can talk about at this time. We are listening to player feedback regarding traveling in the world. So he didn't say no, which is amazing. So that I, actually made me. I really, really hope they take their sweet time with that. Even if we, you know, nothing is heard for a year and a half and build a system 
in-depth, deep, deep system revolving around mounts in this yes. game. Make it yes. something like, special. I felt like you got stuck with a deep part right there. I'm just saying. Well, you, you know. said it three times. Deep. Triple. Th right. Times three. You know. I'm honestly not a fan of mounts. Even though I was a World of Warcraft guy, I feel like the world shrinks when you get a mount. I agree. And I feel like you lose that yeah. open worldness, right? Yeah. I hate flying mounts. I absolutely hate flying mounts. Yeah. And and that's just my opinion, but the reason why is because you really think about how WoW felt when they had to put fly mounts in for their their episodes, right? Because most of their content is going from point A to point B, right? Right. So you miss it, right? You miss the reasons why you love the game. You miss the ambiance of the the wilderness. You miss the sounds, right? And all that stuff because you're in such a hurry. And maybe right. that's what the biggest problem with MMOs now is because everybody's in such a hurry. Maybe we should go back to old MMO playing where everything was a grind, where everything was a little slower, where it was based around community and not about mythic pluses and, and all that. You know what I'm saying? Make it about the players. Make it about the mm. people who log in every like day. That. Give them a reason to be in your world. Yeah. And I think mounts take away from that. I always have. Yeah. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. I'll be, if they were to even think about doing mounts, though, in the game, I, I was thinking the other day, I don't think I'd want more than 5% like speed increase, like very minimal, if if at all, because you're, I agree with you 100%. The moment, you know, Warcraft added flying, uh, it eliminated so much exploration, you know? You could just fly to wherever you wanted to. It, you didn't have to, like, figure anything out, you know? And... You know what? I think I'm, yeah, I think I'm going to recant my statement on what I said earlier. I don't think I want mounts now. Yeah, yeah that was a good point, man. <laughs> well, well I mean, actual... I'm not trying to sell. No, the you the sold actual... me. Wait, okay. I'll buy that extended warranty. I'm trying to be a nerd. The I... actual lore reason why there's no mounts in the game, I, I think, is, is fantastic. That whenever anybody brought any type of a working animal or pet to a turnum, they were immediately corrupted. Yeah. Like they would turn on them and actually uh, one of our good friends, uh, Zytheria, who's probably still in chat, she actually wrote and she wrote like a, like an RP style article and it's on our website, loreseekerscast.com. Really awesome RP about pets turning on you. And, and it, it is, it's absolutely built into the lore of the game, at least for right now. Now I could see in the future as regions grow because that's another brilliant thing i think that they've done at amazon game studios is they built our world of a turnum on an island that island can get incredibly freaking big with expansions and and uh additions to the game and new chapters and such they can build upon this island and make it as big as they freaking want so yeah i love that when that happens they either have the choice to add some type of a four-legged traveling system for you, or they could increase the um, the internal games travel. You know, what which... if... Sorry. No, no, no. That's, that's it. What that's if we point. just, you know, for, you know, for... Went separate ways with mounts, and we just added ships. Customizable ships. You know, just full-on pirate. You know, like, I think that would... That'd be... No? Yeah? No? Well, you, I'm not going to say, say that. that. Right. You say that like we might have that in the future where there might be naval comp. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe oh. one eyebrow raised. Maybe. Right. Holy so, crap. not to get too far away from mountains, like Cheryl made a good point in chat when she talks about how if it was like a pack animal you can carry because you do have a weight limit on your character, you can only carry so much. So what if the mounts were something that you had to constantly, like once a day, you had to tame it, right? Or you had to cleanse it, right? Just as an RP stack. And if you didn't want to go through the process, you could just click a button and it'd be gone because some people don't want to deal with it, right? But a beast of burden instead of something you ride. So you could bring that beast of burden to the base of a mountain, climb up the mountain, mine the stuff, bring it down to the beast of burden, put it on him, and then you can walk him. But if you're flagged, this is the best part. Oh boy. And you get jumped, you lose everything. Or they can take, you know what I'm saying? They can take stuff. Oh, off. yeah. Maybe like 30, per, like a 30%, right? Yeah, like yeah. Not all of it, because you don't want that to happen. If right. you worked for three hours digging, but right. like you lose a percentage of it. Oh, so it yeah. gives that 
for a lack of a better term, pucker factor, right? Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. With all the looting stuff, I want alpaca. <laughs> you know that spit, right? Yeah, that's just... fine. I want alpaca. <laughs> okay. Can we, should we you write them one more time? How do you say that? Alpaca. What's that? What's that? You got to throw your throw on there. <laughs> it's a <laughs> like a yamaka. <laughs> Well, he just wants to go down to the barn and grab the other pack and oh bring him boy. out to the barn yard, feed him a little yeah. bit of the greens and stuff. Ah, oh, we took the oh. show to Orange Country. I love it. That is a thing here in Indiana. I'll tell you what, boy. Oh, anyway. All right. Well, Dude, I remember when right. I was a, so I remember when I was a deputy sheriff, just real quick, and I remember the Amish guy walking to me and going, "Well, how fast is that car?" I go faster than that horse. <laughs> good one. And that's all he said and walked right off. It was so good, dude. That's well, so yeah, funny. It made sense. <laughs> like, so good. Hey, uh, how many horsepower is that horse? One. <laughs> what do you think? It's one. Oh, oh that's funny. All right. So anyway, to to, uh, to finish this off, there were a couple other points that I wanted to hit with the uh, Q&A. The first one was a really good question about how many uh, language servers that they're going to, different language servers that they're going to have across the world. And they said they are covering multiple. They didn't have the list on them, but they are covering multiple because they want the game to be accessible and approachable across the world, which I, I was like, dude, yeah, like that. You absolutely have to do that, especially for this game. And, and case in point on this, I, I do our Instagram for Lore Seekers Cast. I have had so many interactions with people other than American, like um, the, one of the one of the the Instagrams that I love to follow is New World Espanol. They post some great stuff. Yeah, they do. Um, and like, I don't I don't understand all of it because I you know I understand like broken Spanish, but um, I love to see that. It's like Portugal and all of these different countries, France. There are a ton of them on Instagram and I'm following them all. And it makes me very, very happy to see that there is that market. And it makes sense because of the time period. Like think of where your character is traveling from to get to a tournament. France, Spain, Italy, Portugal, all of those areas over there. And it makes me very happy to see that in a game to, to take that culture and drop it into this game. Yeah. It really is going to open stuff up for us and storytelling. I love uh, it. Yes, agreed. 100%. And by the way, they do post really, really good stuff over there on that uh, Instagram oh, great page. Stuff. I'll lurk on that one. Yeah, pretty, great stuff. So awesome. the last thing that I want to hit is um, they showed some exclusive footage of uh, the new skins, which were the Verdant Trapper, which was available um, during yesterday's Gamescom stream. And then the Golden Rage skin which is sick. It's like basically golden armor with the big giant horns. And I was like, I can get that one. <laughs> I wanted that one so bad. So I didn't get that one. Anyway, uh, last thing they closed with was obviously the announcement they already talked about, open beta coming September 9th through 12th and the game's official release on September 28th. I can't believe we're almost actually, yeah, when this comes out, it'll be, you know, less than a month. Less than a month away. I know. Yep. Still plenty of time to get in trouble. We're getting there. So I'm gonna try not to get arrested and be incarcerated incarcerated before this. Legit what I tell my students. I have to wait on my class start. All right, no I get in trouble, no write ups. <laughs> Everyone listening doesn't know I what I do, but anyway, <laughs> we'll keep that up. We'll keep that. <laughs> keep that a bit true for now. Uh, so anyway, um, yeah, great information coming out of Gamescom this year. Exciting information, and we're getting ever closer to the launch of New World. So you put together an article that I've been wanting to talk about since we started, aka last week, because it's so accurate to the feeling that we've all had leading up to this game's, you know, launch. And that is, you know, you asked the question, and really this is our discussion for the for the night, is Amazon's timing right on the money? Yes. Um, I've had a lot of stuff 
going through my head in the last few weeks. And I think, uh, I think a lot of the reason that that is the case is because the Lore Seekers podcast is making a massive change. A massive change is something that we were used to for, for a long time. Um, and we were very engrossed in Elder Scrolls Online. And I think the fact that I think all of these things kind of came into into play and it kind of created the perfect storm for Amazon Game Studios. And I don't say that to take anything away from the other awesome games that are that are out there right now, like Albion Online, which I, I kind of chuckled at a little bit, is actually a, it's a really good game. Sea of Thieves is a super fun oh, game, kind of MMO-ish, right? Dude, yes. Um, Black Desert in its own right, really good game. Star Wars The Old Republic still has a ton of story to tell, still has a ton of players out there. Yep. Obviously, Elder Scrolls Online, Final Fantasy XIV. Every one of those games is a fantastic game. But... The thing that that was missing there is not just a new game, but a next gen MMO. And like the interface for New World kind of says a lot of, of the tale that I was that I was just telling. Like it's super sleek. It's it's beautiful. There's an open world PVP system with with flagging. There's a giant world to explore. There is a lot of potential in what we are seeing in New World. Now, the fact that that is taking place now for, for as many times as Amazon Game Studios has pushed it back. I think this is the perfect storm. I think all the planets are aligning. I think all the Swiss cheese holes are lining up perfectly. <laughs> yeah. Because... Look what's happening. I'm actually going to let Champ talk about this one, but look what's happening with Blizzard, right? Yeah. You know, that, you, you take a company who started off with the community in mind, and that's where I'm at with it. So you have, you know, during Lich King days, one of the things I loved the most about it was you had that community feel, and it was before the LFRs, before the looking for groups, you know, when a community was important. And I believe that that's what Amazon's trying to capture, right? I believe their game is centralized, no mail. The economy is run by the, by the players, right? So the auction houses are the players. You don't walk up and buy a pickaxe from somebody, you go make it. You know, those elements where it makes it feel like you're having to make things in the game to progress yourself. And then the community runs the economy, right? So I just feel like it... You know, Blizzard had that going for them. And then the LFR started, the looking for groups started, you know, the arena PvP started, and then the imbalance. And then you got the gold farming, the gold selling, selling carries. All of these things happened because WoW got big, right? They lost their community manager. Remember back in the day when you could type a message in to the community and you'd actually get a community manager would answer you? It's been 10 yeah. years, 15 years, right? I mean, it's been forever since that's been a thing. And when you treat your people that work for your company the way that they are being accused of, right? Because we got to wait till we find out everything. But when you have your people working on a game in that type of environment, it's hard to make an, a AAA title when you're under that kind of stress or you're dealing with that kind of work environment, right? And I just feel like right now, Amazon is that breath of fresh air. It's that open world community feeling game that everybody wants and being an old wow player i want it really bad because i would love to have that lich king feel again you know what i mean just right. that the community is the most important part of it and the game is just there for the community to use yeah. that's a big deal that's a real big deal i think one of the biggest things too is when i talk about the perfect storm i'm gonna leave the biggest one for last but you're looking at a gap in MMO game releases, like we talked about earlier. That gap has left people ravenous. There's only, there's a few games that are sitting up at that, at the top of the echelon right now that have a majority of players. And that would be World of Warcraft, Elder Scrolls Online, and Final Fantasy XIV. 
you add into that mix that we have not had a release in quite a while of a next gen MMO. Okay. Then on top of that, you mentioned some stuff about Blizzard, and I'm going to talk about the freaking elephant in the room. They had a major freaking scandal happen over the last several weeks. We are not going to dive into that other than to say I am incredibly blown away. I think a lot of people are incredibly blown away that for the last 10 plus years in podcasting and content creation, it wasn't just us. It was a lot of people talking about what is that game going to be that unseats World of Warcraft as the king. Not a single one of us thought that it would be Blizzard that would unseat World of Warcraft. And they have successfully done that. So the whole point of this article, to me, is that Amazon, whether they knew it or not, and I pretty much think they probably did know it, that they were going to time this correctly, they absolutely are hitting the timing perfectly. Next Gen MMO hasn't been an MMO launch in a long freaking time, major AAA title, and a massive exodus leaving World of Warcraft. It is the perfect storm. So, I, I don't know. I, I, is it complete coincidence? Absolutely not. We're talking about Amazon. They know what the heck they're doing. They may have had some surprises along the way. Like, oh, wow, that worked out in our favor. You know what I mean? But like this, it, this has created the perfect storm. And I think they're releasing this at the absolute perfect time. Two things that you said. Uh, one, next gen. That is, this is the first next gen title. MMO, in my opinion, the first one. And it shows... You know, you talk again, ravenous. Point number two. And because of that, people are ravenous. They're ravenous. You know, like you, you talked about, uh, we talked earlier, seven years since, you know, the last AAA has come out. Like, I get it. You know, a lot for the longest time, AAAs, you know, you, you say you say that and then a negative connotation would come along, so, alongside that. And honestly, a lot of that was earned. But when, and I don't mean to go back to previous stuff, but. It's unfair to to play this game or to watch footage and say, ah, oh, well, it's not as good as it's not as good as Warcraft. It's not as good as ESO. It's not as good as Final Fantasy because this game is just getting ready to start its journey. It's day one. Day one starts, right. like Scott said, on launch day. That's when this starts. And so what you look at is you don't look at, you know, the long, you know, like where it's we're comparing it. You, you can't, you, you cannot do that. So what you do is you look at the foundation. Is the foundation solid? And I feel like MMO players, we've been so ravenous. We've had a really, 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 really good testing ground for the last seven plus years of what is not good. What does not have a solid foundation. And the moment that you know, Champ and I both stepped in. We, I, I, I'll say it again. I distinctly remember telling you, Champ, I have to log off. Otherwise, I'm not going to stop playing this game. Right. Because yeah. it has that foundation that is so solid. The open world, the gathering system, the crafting systems, really paying, investing into your crafters with what they can craft. You know, oh, player-driven economies, that which is handled through territories, which you can own and run. Which, by the way, Lore Seeker Company, yeah, we're gonna have one. We want to at least. <laughs> and you know, it's just all of these things tied to this one specific date in time, where things have happened outside of Amazon's control. But regardless, they happened. Regardless, it, it happened. Awful things took place at other companies that should never have happened, but they happened. And now, from a business standpoint, not only is Amazon in a place where they stand to do well, but the players, we as players, gamers, get to enjoy something 
that is totally brand new and it's next gen and the foundation is very very good yeah, and if they can sift through the trolls out there and listen to the player base and take some of the things from the player base, which they've already proven that they can do and will do. This game's the the evolving of this game, you know, three, four, five years down the line, is going to be something pretty special. Yeah, and that that is our point. Like that's why we're here. We are we are here for day one, and to watch them turn this game into what it is capable of being yeah and, and let's not forget they have made the statement we are already working on post-launch content yeah so now you have to bring it because yeah. when you throw something like that at, at mmo players you have to deliver so if they can deliver on their promises get the weapons you know lined in so the pvp is even because we all know balancing pvp can be tough right i mean jb how many times did we you know, we had a character we wanted to play. The next ar arena season started in WoW, and we had to switch it. Oh, bro, yeah. It was like because a... it got the nerf bat. Yeah. Or it just didn't get any love. Yeah. You know, or think about when we took the Holy, when we took, not the Holy Paladin, but the Ret Pallies, and nobody, everybody said you can't do anything with it, and, and people were running from us in Battlegrounds because we were just <laughs> destroying them <laughs> Dude, that because so we good. found that, n that niche build that worked, right? Yeah. And we timed our things together. So I think with New World, there are going to be some low skill cap, you know, weapons, I think. They always do that. There'll be some that are more simplified to use, right? And then they're the more complex. Like, you didn't play a mage in WoW at the very beginning because you wouldn't get it. Some people could, but you know what I'm saying? A lot of people didn't start off with the mage or what I call the original ones from WoW, right? The warrior, the mage, the rogue. A lot of times they're their uh, rotation could be kind of complex yeah. if you wanted to play at a high-end level. Right. And I think with this game, there's keeping the weapons at more of a simplistic manner. And I don't mean simplistic like it's not going to challenge you. I just mean giving you choices that matter and not a lot of fluff. Yeah. Right? right. And please, New World, if you by chance watch this, don't bring barred power to the game. I'm begging. Because I don't want that. <laughs> oh, yeah. You yeah. know, I just every my character when I started WoW was the same strength. All he was was his gear, or whatever medallion cape or whatever it was. I really hope that New World stays into a thing where they grow the player and they grow your player as you go, right? And they, they become stronger. They have that progression because then yeah. you're more invested into your character. Right, right. Agreed. Agreed. Hundred percent. Quick question in chat that I do want to answer. Um, and this is from from Jumaraf. It says, yeah, but the lack of end game or general content is important. Lots of people are content locusts. And like we're definitely that. Do you think Amazon can keep up? Can they hit a consistent release schedule every quarter? So I wanna wanna take this first part about the lack of end game content. There is end game content. It is there. They are it's already in the plans, but a big part of what the end game content is already that exists in this game is player driven yeah it is that high end like like i was saying yep. for for the for the folks who are in here that are playing eso that are our eso uh, fans from our eso show you're looking at the entire map the entire map is cyrodiil so yeah it's going to bring in a certain type of person into this game maybe it's going to bring in a lot more pvp people in this game for sure but there is plans for and already existing end game pve content for the game and they have already said that they are going to be hitting consistent release um goals and that it just brings me to my last point on this one of the biggest things that i was excited about while watching the the development of this game watching the beta all the studying that we've been doing and all the things that uh, made the culmination of bringing us into this game what it seems to us is that Amazon Game Studios has done their homework, taken a look at every single MMO that's out there, taken the things from each MMO that they enjoy and like, what has worked, what has not. 
little bits and pieces and put their own recipe together. And that is the product that's going to get delivered to us. And one of those things that I am positive they paid attention to was the almost unmatchable schedule of content releases that Elder Scrolls Online has had. Oh, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we have yeah. heard them say that that they have a they have that's the reason why they're already working on new stuff right now because they are looking three months down the line six months down the line one year down the line to be able to have a regular schedule of releasing content if they can you're right if they can nail that one thing that is going to exponentially grow this game over time and put them on a schedule to be suc as successful as elder scrolls online's release um cadence was and i absolutely think that's going to happen it's amazon they're going to nail this the cadence in eso the release cadence was the best i've ever seen ever and it yeah. always made it feel like there was things happening in the world and things you could look forward to that as a player that feeling as a player it's reassuring it's exciting and you're always on the edge of your seat because you know xyz is coming and so yeah. I hope they can capture something like that. Right, and and even the same, you know, said in chat, truthfully, my doubts come with Amazon. Does the future monetization worry you? Well, monetization worries me just because of the way WoW was, right? If you wanted the, the, the good mount, you had to buy it from the store because the mounts they were putting in the game were just resets, recolors, you know, things like that. And I agree with you. Uh, that does worry me to a degree. And, and because we don't want it to get to a point where it's a money grab, right? We want it to be a progressive community driven game. And I right. think Amazon has stated the fact they feel the same way. They want to build the community. You know, we've talked with Sellis very, you know, several times about, you know, just the how Amazon wants to build that community, build it around the community. And that's what they're focused on is, is making that game somewhere where you want to live, right? Not where you want to visit, you want to live here. And that's the key, right? That's to selling that game. So I do agree. I, I hope and pray there's not this huge cash shop that's tied into a bunch, unless it's all fluff. If it's, you want to buy a hat with a big feather in it, you want to spend yeah. 20 bucks on it, throw your 20 bucks. Yeah. But if it's not tied to, you know, power or anything like that, I'm, you know, if you want to buy money or spend money to buy things in the game, have at it. As long as it doesn't make you better than me if I don't want to spend the money. And I think that's the important part. And that that might be a good topic for for a future Maybe show. We'll talk is, about that um, next week. Is the cash shop? Yeah, yeah. because um, that it has definitely been the pay to win thing has definitely been a big issue in the community. So yeah. I I have no problem Love diving that. right into that one. Yep, absolutely. Hmm, that was good. All right, yeah. friends. Well, first off, cash. Great job on that article. That was a lot of fun to talk oh, about. But thank you. Um, I right, remember ready for lore. You guys ready for lore? Yeah. All right, here we go. Let's check this one out. Lore Lesson 2, Dismantling Eternum. For one who seeks lore, the initial days surrounding the launch of a new MMO is a magical time. When the story of the game is relatively unknown and untouched, the discovery of the game's tale lies with you. As the launch of Amazon's New World approaches, the lore seekers have been hard at work extracting the subtle hints the lore team at Amazon Game Studios have been injecting into the game trailers, screenshots, and concept art. On this week's lore lesson, we share some of that information with you. One of the most intriguing aspects of New World's lore is the marriage between the alternate version of the 17th century and our own world history. In other games worlds we've covered, only on rare occasions have we had the opportunity to compare and contrast the fantasy playgrounds with that of our own days of old. To further expand upon the mysteries we will uncover in New World, two wallpapers for the game, appearing on the main website at newworld.com, really grabbed our attention. Both wallpapers utilize the head of a figure wearing a metal Morian helm, that conquistador style helm, with a metallic face. Now, there are many things in these wallpapers to analyze and speculate upon. Mention but two. First, and probably most obvious, 
is the script imprinted upon the left cheekbone of the figure's mask. Aside from the very noticeable aeternum scratched into the metal of the face, the more subdued script beneath presented a bit more of a challenge to decode. Our team discovered the writing was Latin, so we dug a little further. Full credit goes to our good friend and real-world historian, Zytheria, who uncovered that the script was actually from the Holy Bible. Revelations 22, verse 2 to be exact. And it reads, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of its street, and on either side of the river, was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Now, does this confirm that we're being sent to Aeternum in search of eternal life? There's definitely been some scuttlebutt about it, but I think this is very, very poignant evidence. Doesn't it make sense that this knowledge would remain a secret of the church and of the nobles, as Father Russo mentioned in New World's video? Perhaps there is a force within the island protecting this life-changing secret, corrupting those who would try to uncover it. Who is this protecting force? Now, many are familiar with the story of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden and how they took the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, but were removed from the garden before they could take from the tree of life. Were the waves of explorers through the centuries sent to Aeternum to uncover the secret of the tree, or perhaps the tree of life itself? Color us intrigued. The second notable discovery from the wallpaper is the fact that the figure depicted is wearing armor adorned with the traditional symbol of the Templars. The famed Knights Templar were a Catholic military order first recognized in the year 1139. Also known as the Poor Fellow Soldiers of Christ of the Temple of Solomon, this prominent order was among the most skilled fighting units of the Crusades and they were known as Christian warrior monks. Templars wore distinctive white mantles with a red cross. The order was also comprised of a very large contingent of non-combative members who managed a large economic infrastructure. Here's a little fun fact. The Crusades of our modern world were a series of religious wars sanctioned by the Latin church during the medieval period. The term crusade can also be applied to other church-sanctioned campaigns throughout history. Now, the Knights Templar were a driving force in the period between 1119 and 1312. They were eventually disbanded due to rumors surrounding their secret initiation and distrust amongst governmental leadership. They were officially dismantled in 1312 by the sitting Pope Clement V. Because of such an abrupt departure of an incredibly influential and powerful group in European society, the Knights Templar became a major source of speculation, legend, and legacy throughout our history. The Knights Templar were also credited with establishing one of the first banks of the world. They began expanding with chapters throughout Western Europe and created a network of banks to allow religious wayfarers to deposit assets in their country of origin and withdraw those funds within the Holy Land of Jerusalem. The Templars excelled in many such business ventures and eventually became enormously wealthy and powerful. This wealth allowed them to build a sizable fleet of ships. This is one reason it plays into a Turnham's story, for them to have mounted expeditions across the sea in search of a hidden island of legend. Now, another intriguing facet of the Knights Templar was the speculation that they were secretively keeping valuable religious artifacts and relics from history. It is widely thought that the Templars were some of the greatest treasure hunters of our history, hoarding relics to increase their massive fortune and fund their operations. A myth continuing to revolve around the Templars is their discovery and safeguarding of the Holy Grail itself. And here's another fun fact. The Holy Grail is a mythical treasure of Arthurian 
legend. Described as a cup, dish, or stone with miraculous powers providing eternal youth, its legend became interwoven with the legend of the Holy Chalice, the vessel that Jesus Christ himself was said to use during the Last Supper to serve wine. Now we're going to add another little tidbit here for you as we close this lore lesson. One more hidden discovery that we made. But for this one, we will say, hang on to your foil helmets, because this one dips into conspiracy theorist territory. Now, back in 1898, in our real world, a farmer in Minnesota in the U.S. located a slab of rock dating back to 1362. Inscribed upon the rock was a hooked X symbol, which has been found to somehow be connected to the Knights Templar. Author and researcher Scott Walter has spent years researching the meaning of the hooked X and its mysterious ties to the Templars, possibly proving that the Templars sailed to America long before the time Christopher Columbus was said to have discovered the New World. Now, without getting too crazy into proposed theories surrounding the hooked X, while studying one of the stunning wallpapers New World has made available on their website, I discovered something insanely coincidental. One of the desktop wallpapers for New World depicts a metallic Morian helmet, conquistador style, in the middle of the rendering, with one side depicting the armies of the corrupted and the other side depicting the newest settlers of Aeternum. Both sides appear to be moving to clash against each other. If you take a close look at the helmet in the center, Zooming into the metallic nose on the helmet, on the more damaged or corrupted side, if you will, you will notice an X symbol just above the right nostril. You guessed it. It's a hooked X. I'll let that one simmer for a minute. Now that could be far-fetched, but it also could be yet another hidden message from the lore team at Amazon Game Studios, further proving the obscure messages they want us to uncover. It's another little fun fact. If you're interested, as much as I was, in learning more about the theory of the Hooked X, there are several YouTube videos for you to dive into. Author and researcher Scott Walter also wrote a book on the subject. It's entitled The Hooked X, Key to the Secret History of North America. And wouldn't you know it, it's available at Amazon.com. The Knights Templar, as indicated by the cryptic messages placed into New World's lore, were undoubtedly part of the history of Eternum. Perhaps in this alternate reality of the world that we know, the Templars were the predecessors to first reach the island sent to search for the mystery of eternal life, or perhaps for more relics to bring back to the Holy Land, but something went wrong was a corruption upon the island that they didn't know of, one that would overtake them and transform them into the very forces that protect the island today. Perhaps our journey, our expedition, is to uncover the secrets surrounding this legend. Prepare to set sail, adventures. We have work to do. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Woo. Deep dive, buddy. Oh, you did good. Uh, you did. I think I think what's going to happen, buddy, is I'm going to end up being the conspiracy theorist of the world. <laughs> think so? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bud. That was so good. So Thank good. You, All of it. All of it. Well, All of it. Friends, be sure who's watching this live. Stick around for a minute. Or to you, thank you for hanging out with us. First time doing Lore Seekers Live. To all of you listening, we hope you enjoyed this show. This is Lore Seekers for New World, and we are coming out with a brand new episode every single Monday. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in today. If you enjoyed yourself here, we want to know about it. Whatever podcast app you're using, doesn't matter what one, leave us a review. For every five-star review that we get on iTunes, though, every written review, we read it right here. Give you some sh a shout-out and some love right here on the show. And we got one here today. It's from It's Ya Boy. 
United States of America says, let, First, let me say I have no doubt that this podcast will be amazing. I've been listening to the Lore Seekers podcast since episode one of the ESO Lore Seekers podcast, and Jibs and Cash, yes, Cash is with a K, are two amazing people who will make you feel like family and deliver outstanding audio content with their show. You listen to these guys, be prepared to never be able to stop. They truly are genuine, beautiful souls and will most definitely lead the way for New World Podcasting. The standard has been set. Second, I just got y'all back in ESO and now you're all a god again. Gotta miss listening to y'all talk ESO, but best of luck with your new venture. I'm positive y'all will make a great community slash family for everyone over in New World. It is, after all, what you do best. It would be cool, though, if y'all dropped a sweet rolls of coffee every, every so often. Wink, wink. Have fun in New World, fellas. Remember, stay classy. Dilly freaking dilly. Mikey Mesh. Thank you so much. Yeah, that was, that's a really cool review. That was awesome. Thank you very much for that. And and I think, um, I think to add on to that, you know, to the experiences that we've had in ESO and now moving over to, uh, to New World, we bring a fresh perspective in Champ. And I think it's just going to help us to evolve into something even more special. Agreed. Well, welcome, buddy. Hey, I'm glad to be here, Cash. Just saying. And it also helps if you don't mute your mic. <laughs> if you want to call us, you can call us at 765-382-6961. Rookie mistakes, don't blame me. Please keep your message to one minute or less, and we'll feature that on the show if it sounds good enough. It's up to you. You can email us at loreseekerscast at gmail.com. And you can also find our podcast, written lore lessons, and articles at loreseekerscast.com. Friends, follow us on the social medias. You can follow Jibs at Jibs IRL. You can follow Champ at Champ2504. You can follow me, Cash, Lore Seeker Cash, and the Cash is with a K. Follow the show. That's where the magic happens on Twitter at Lore Seekers Cast. You can also follow us on Instagram at Lore Seekers Cast. Now, very importantly to us, I'm going to try out another podcast. There's a bunch of them out there, amazing podcasts. But. Follow our good friend Solus's podcast because he's doing some pretty amazing work at his podcast called To Eternum, where he presents an amazing original RP storyline and talks community building in New World. You can find him on Twitter and Instagram at Eternum Cast. Also, follow us right here on Twitch. This is our cozy new home. We're back. Twitch.tv forward slash Loreseekers Cast. Friends, thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great week. Be awesome to one another. Take care of other people. We love you. And uh, we're almost we're almost there. We'll see you next week. See you next week, everyone. Much love.